Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 3, lesson 1, solve equations with variables on each side. After this lesson, you need to be able to use the properties of equality to solve equations with variables on each side that have rational coefficients. Let's learn. Equations with variables on each side. Sometimes equations, like 8 plus 3x equals 5x plus 2, have variables on each side of the equal sign. To solve these types of problems, we're going to use the properties of equality that we learned about in the supplemental lessons to write equivalent equations with variables on only one side, and then we can use what we've learned in previous lessons and previous grades to solve the equation. So if we're given 8 plus 3x equals 5x plus 2, we can eliminate the variable off of one side, so it's only left on the other, by doing the opposite of what we see. So if we see that plus, we can do subtraction. And we're going to do it with the same thing. So this was plus 3x. I'm going to subtract 3x. It is eliminated off of that side. And I'm left with, when I do it on the other side, 5x minus 3x is 2x. If I wanted to, I could have subtracted 5x from both sides and got negative 2x over on the other side. It doesn't really matter which one you're getting rid of. As long as you're doing it to both sides, you should end up with the same answer regardless. So 5x minus 3x is 2x. Now I'm at a point where I only have the variable on one side, so this should now be a problem that we've practiced quite a bit. 8 equals 2x plus 2. I would need to get rid of that plus 2, so that way I can have just the variable on one side. So I would do that by doing the opposite to both sides. Again, we're going to use the subtraction property to eliminate addition. 8 minus 2 is 6. Now I have 6 equals 2x. There's a hidden multiplication in there. I would need to divide both sides by 2 to get my answer. 2 divided by 2 is just 1x, and I don't need to write the 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I'm using the same properties as I did before when there was only one variable on one side to rearrange and make a new equation where I have a variable on both sides. Example 1. Solve equations with variables on each side. So let's solve 6n minus 1 equals 4n minus 5. First, we can see there's a variable on each side, so we're going to eliminate it off of one side first by doing the opposite operation so that it makes 0. Here, they're showing us they're going to subtract 4n, so what we do to one side, we need to do to the other. Simplifying, 6n minus 4n gives us 2n, and then 4n minus 4n is 0, so we don't need to write it. Now I have 2n minus 1 equals negative 5. My variable is on the left, so I need to eliminate that constant value on that same side by doing the opposite. So opposite of minus 1 is add 1. That would make 0. Doing it to both sides, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Now I'm left with 2 times n equals negative 4, so divide both sides by 2. I find that n is equal to negative 2. So the solution to this would be n equals negative 2. We should check our answer by plugging in negative 2 in for n. So 6 times negative 2 gives us negative 12, and then minus 1 more is negative 13. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Subtracting 5 more is also negative 13. So we end up with a true statement. Negative 2 was the correct solution. Check your understanding. Solve this equation. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got x equals 3. Let's go through how to get that. So I'm going to rewrite the equation so I have some space. 10 minus 3x equals negative 5 plus 2x. I see a variable on both sides. So I need to do the opposite of one of them to both sides. I could subtract 2x or I could add 3x. I think adding is generally a little bit easier, so I'm going to add. You don't have to, but that's what I'm going to do. Negative 3x plus 3x is 0. I'm left with just 10 on the left. And then 2x plus 3x is 5x, and I still have that minus 5. So I have negative 5 plus 5x, since this was positive 2 plus 3 more is positive 5. Now I need to get my variable by myself, so I'm going to add 5 to both sides. 10 plus 5 is 15, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, so that eliminates, and then I'm left with just 5x. 
This is five times x, so I would divide by five. 15 divided by five is three. Five divided by five is one. I don't need to write the one, so I'm just left with x. Three is equal to x, which is the same as x equals three. If you had subtracted two x from both sides to begin with, and ended up with negative five on this side, you should get the same answer. And in fact, it would look exactly as the way I presented the answer here. But again, it does not matter which one you choose to eliminate or which way you are doing it, as long as you are following those properties of equality and continuing to keep a true statement throughout. Example two, solve equations with rational coefficients. Solve two thirds x minus one equals nine minus one sixth x. So for this, there's gonna be two methods we're gonna go through. One of them we're going to just calculate with the fractions, and then the second method we're going to eliminate the fractions. So first, let's just use our operations with fractions. So because these have different denominators, we need to find a common denominator, especially since our first step, if I see minus 1 6 x, is probably going to be adding. Or if I chose to do C positive 2 thirds, my first step would be subtracting. And when we add and subtract with fractions, they have to have a common denominator. So 2 thirds is the same as 4 sixths. And then negative 1 sixth already has a denominator of 6, so it's still just negative 1 sixth. Now I can use the addition property of equality. Negative 1 sixth plus 1 sixth gives us our 0. That was what eliminated. If I'm doing 4 sixths plus 1 sixth, I end up with 5 sixths. And I was dealing with x's, so it's 5 sixths x. Bring down that minus 1, and that still is equal to... Now I just have a two-step equation with a fraction, so I would add one to both sides. I get 5 sixth x equals 10. Then I can use the reciprocal of the fraction to, when I multiply those together, they equal 1. 6 fifths times 5 sixths is equal to 1, which we don't need to write. I multiplied one side by 6 fifths, so I have to do the other side by 6 fifths. 10 times 6 fifths, 10 times 6 is 60, divided by 5 is 12. So after all that, we found x to be equal to 12. A second way to do this is by using the lowest common denominator to eliminate the fractions. So the first part of this, similar, we're going to find a common denominator. So we had 2 thirds is the same as 4 sixths, and then 1 sixth was already a denominator of 6. Where this one differs, instead of adding 1 sixth to both sides, we're going to multiply by what that lowest common denominator was, which is 6. And I have to multiply everything by that common denominator. So 6 times 4 is 6x. 6 times 4 is 24 divided by 6 is 4. I end up with just 4x. 6 times 1 is 6. So I'd have 4x minus 6. There's your distributive property. Same thing with the other side. 6 times 9 is 54. And 6 times 1 6 is just 1, so just x. Now I just have an equation with a variable on both sides. So I'm going to add x to both sides, eliminating it there. 4x plus 1 more x is equal to 5x. 5x minus 6 is 54. Add 6 to both sides, so it's gone off of the side with the variable. I have 5x equals 60. Last, divide, since this is multiplication, divide both sides by 5. I still end up with 12. So we had two ways we could solve the same thing with fractions. Do which way works best for you. As always, we should check our answer. So we got 12, let's plug in 12 for x. 2 thirds of 12 is eight. And then over here we have 1 sixth of 12, which is just two. Is eight minus one the same as nine minus two? Yes, they are both equal to seven. So 12 is our correct answer. Check your understanding. Solve this given equation. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found x was equal to negative 30. 2 thirds x plus 5 equals 2 fifths x minus 3. I can see I have a denominator of 3 and a denominator of 5, meaning I need to make a common denominator. The lowest one is going to be 15. So make those out of 15. 2 thirds put out of 15, an equal fraction would be 10 out of 15 with the x. Still plus 5, because that didn't deal with our denominator, equals, and then this must be 6x minus 3. 
I'm going to use the way of eliminating fractions, so I need to multiply this whole thing by 15. I just write it as parentheses around everything, and you can write it with parentheses and then the 15 again, as they showed. I'm just going to multiply the 15 by everything and keep it with the equals in the middle. So 15 times 10 divided by 15 is just 10. It ends up just being the numerator. 15 times 5 is 75. 15 times 6 fifteenths ends up being 6. And 15 times negative 3 ends up being negative 45. Now I'm going to solve, subtract 6x from both sides to eliminate the variable off of the right side. That gives me 4x. Because now my variable is on the left, I'm going to have to subtract that 75 from both sides. Same sign, so add them. 45 and 75 gives me 120. And it's negative. So 4x equals negative 20. Last step, divide by 4. x must be equal to negative 20 divided by 4 is negative which was our correct answer. And we should go back and plug in and see if we get that. So if I plug in negative 30 instead of x here and here, 2 thirds of negative 30 gives me negative 20, and then plus 5 is negative 15. So the left side was negative 15. 2 fifths of negative 30. If I were to divide by 5, I get 6 times 2 is negative 12. Minus 3 is also negative 15. So checking my solution, when I plugged in negative 30, I got negative 15 on both sides. My equation was true, so my answer must be true. Example three, solve equations with rational coefficients. Solve 2.3x plus 2.8 equals negative 1.2x plus 9.8. The process here is the same that we saw with our integer coefficients and with our fraction coefficients. These are just decimals, so we're still gonna eliminate our variable term from one side by doing the opposite. Then we'll eliminate our constant term from the other side by doing the opposite, and so on. So here they're showing add 1.2x, so we could add 1.2x to eliminate it from the right side. 2.3 plus 1.2 is 3.5 with the x. Bring down the rest. 3.5x plus 2.8 is equal to 9.8. Subtract our constant term from both sides, so subtracting 2.8 from both sides gives us 7 on the right side and it's gone off the left. Last, I'm going to divide by 3.5. So dividing both sides by 3.5, I end up with x is equal to two. And let's not forget to check our solution. So plugging in two where x was, multiplying it out, 2.3 times two is 4.6. Adding 2.8, we get 7.4. Negative 1.2 times two is negative 2.4. Adding 9.8, we also get 7.4. True statement at the end means our answer was true. So two is the correct answer. Check your understanding, solve the given equation, pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got 4.5. So let's rewrite this for space. I have a variable on both sides, so I'm going to do the opposite of one of them to both sides. Again, I generally will add when I can. So if I see a minus something, I'm probably gonna try adding the opposite. It's gone off of the right. 4.06 plus 1.26 ends up being 5.32 with our x's. And then I see plus 3.22 here, so I gotta subtract 3.22 from both sides. It's gone off of that side. And 27.16 minus 3.22, that is going to equal 23.94. So I have 5.32x equals 23.94. My last step is going to be to divide by the coefficient of x. So 5.32 to both sides. 23.94 divided by 5.32 is going to be 4.5. So x equals 4.5, which is what we got there. And again, we should get in the habit of checking our solution, but for sake of time in this video, I am not going to go through that for this one. 4.5 is the correct answer.